In this video, we look at the basics of differentiation. So we're in topic five here, calculus in the AI course, under the subtopic of differential calculus. In topic five calculus, there are two main subtopics, differential calculus and integral calculus. Now this is the second video in a four part video series on differential calculus. In the first video, we looked at what does differential calculus actually mean? And we had a curve, a quadratic curve, and we started sketching um, tangents to the curve at any particular point. And those tangents actually gave us the slope of the curve. And we talked about that's actually what differential calculus means. It's finding the slope of a curve at any point. Now in that video, I had an equation and I just gave the derivative on the screen. And then we used that derivative to find the gradient of the tangent. Now the next logical question is, well, how did you get that derivative? Where did that come from? How did you find it? And that's what this video is about. If we have an initial equation here, like this cubic here, how do we differentiate this cubic to find its derivative? So that's what we're doing in this video. Okay, let's look at the rule to follow here. We'll talk this through and then we'll go through, uh, through th these three different examples here. Okay, I have this diagram here next to pretty much every differential calculus question in the question bank and practice exams. So if I initially have ax to the b, where a is just the coefficient of x, so this, is, this could just be a number like two or five or a fraction maybe, and b is just the power on x, when I want to differentiate this, what we do is we bring the power down, the b down in front of the x, and then we subtract one off the power. And then after this, we'll clean this second, this second line up by multiplying the a and the b together. Okay, so just keep this in mind as we go through and differentiate these three equa uh, equations or, or, or functions. We actually have a function here in example two. Okay, example one, we have an equation here. So y equals, as opposed to a function, which is f of x equals. The derivative we'll call y dash. Another way, another notation for the derivative in equation form is actually do y dx. So you'll see either of these two notations. And do y dx actually stands for the change in y over the change in x. And that kind of gets to the core roots of what differential calculus is all about, about finding um, the, 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 the slope of, of a tangent is kind of like finding the slope of a secant, but we won't get into that here. So this is the change in y over the change in x, dy dx. But in simple terms, we can just call that y dash. Okay, let's go ahead and differentiate these four terms here. Five x to the three, the three comes out the front of the x and we subtract one of the power. So this will be, we leave that a out the front like you can see here. And then we bring the three down and then we subtract one off the power. So we have differentiated this first term here. Let's look at this second term. The negative seven will stay out the front. The two will come out the front of the x and then we subtract one off the power. That's the second term differentiated. Let's now do the third term. Now just keep in mind here, when we have three x, there's a hidden one on the power of x. It's just unwritten. So this will be, we keep the three at the front. We bring the one down and then we subtract one off the power. So one goes to zero. And then finally, this 12 here is just a constant. It's just a number. Whenever we differentiate just a constant, it goes to zero. So I can just say plus zero here. Okay, we have differentiated. Let's now go and clean this up to make it look a bit nicer. So y dash is equal to this first term here, five times three is 15. So 15 x squared. The second term, the negative seven will multiply by the two to make negative 14. And the x to the power of one will just leave as x. The third term is an interesting one. x to the power of zero is equal to one. Anything to the power of zero is equal to one. So this is actually one times one. So this is actually three times one, which is just plus three. And we don't need to bring the zero down. So there we have it. We have differentiated our initial equation to find the derivative y dash. Okay, let's look at example two now. We have a function now, but we go through the exact same process. The notation for the derivative of a function is f dash of x. So f dash of x is the derivative of f of x. Now this looks a little bit complicated because we have a fraction, but it's not. The four on three is just simply the coefficient of the x squared term. That's like our a term here. So same process, we leave that out the front, four on three and then we differentiate the x squared, so the two will come out the front, and then we subtract one off the power, 
Uh, so two take one is one on the power there, but we don't write the one, so it's just two X. We can then multiply the four on three by the two together. So four on three, that'll become eight on three. Feel free to check that on your calculator. That's eight on three X. And there we have it. There is our derivative F dash of X. Okay, third example. Now this is about as hard as you'll get in the AI uh, SL course. In the AI HL course, you'll get harder than this, but in the AI SL course, this is about as hard as you'll get when you're wanting to differentiate a term with the X on the bottom of the fraction. You need to do a preliminary step first before you can differentiate. Now the preliminary step is, if I have say one on X to the power of four, I can actually rewrite this as x to the power of negative four. So take it to the top of the fraction and um, change the sign of the power. These two are actually equal to each other. And you can also go the other way as well. So if I had say um, two x to the negative three, I could actually rewrite this as two on x to the power of positive three. So you can go either way here. So whenever you have an example like this, where you have the x, the power of x on the bottom of the fraction, you need to rewrite this such that the x to the power term is no longer on the bottom of the fraction. So I'm going to rewrite this, so we're not differentiating it, we're just rewriting it as four on three, x to the power of negative two. And that is actually equal to, I, don't, I prefer not to write it this way, but this is actually equal to this as well. These two are equal to each other, same thing. Okay, let's go ahead now and differentiate what we see in green here. So this will be, uh, we have an equation here, y equals. So like example one, the notation for the derivative is y dash. So y dash will equal, now our coefficient is the four on three, so we can just leave that out the front. Four on three. Now we differentiate the x to the power of negative two terms, so the negative two comes out the front. X, and then we subtract one off the power. We don't, we don't take it closer to zero. I often see students do that. Uh, the negative two going to negative one, but no, we need to subtract one. So this actually becomes to the power of negative three. Okay, in the next step, I'm going to multiply the negative two and the four on three. So that will become negative eight on three, X to the power of negative three. Now in, in mathematics, it's always good practice to leave your powers as positive powers. So currently I have X to the power of negative three. I'm actually gonna do this process again to take it down the bottom of the fraction and turn the power positive. So to leave this in, in nice clean final form, this will be negative eight on three X cubed. And that right there is the derivative of our, of our initial equation. Okay, they were three examples of how to differentiate terms to find the derivative. I now uh, recommend going and practicing C of these type of questions over in the question bank section.